Welcome back to the channel. This week's project, a Fujitsu Lifebook A514. I bought this secondhand. It's described as having a motherboard fault. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and inject power into it and see if it powers on. I have the bare chassis with this. Uh, I've no keyboard, I've no mouse, I've no battery, I've no charger, no screen. I just basically have the motherboard and the chassis, but that's all we're interested in to try and repair motherboards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect up my own power supply to this. This accepts 19 volts, 3.42 amps. So I'm gonna hook up my DC power supply to the motherboard and see what we're getting. This is my motherboard. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and hooked up my crocodile clips. So I'm getting a ground here at our RAM socket and I'm getting a positive at the input fuse. So I'm injecting 19 volts here. So let's switch on the power supply and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see there, it very quickly went up to 11 milliamps and then back to zero again. So it was initially drawn current and then seems to have shut down. On the board itself, I'm not seeing any lights at all. I've got my power button plugged in. There's no lights on it. There's no lights anywhere else on the board. And when I press the power button, nothing is happening. I'm looking at the power supply. I'm not seeing any change in the current being drawn. And that's when I press the power button here and there's no lights coming on. So that's what's happening with it. Let's take a few pictures and start some troubleshooting. And this is my image of the motherboard that I took with my flathead scanner. So we're going to start at the DC input where we always start. You can actually identify that even from this high level view of the board. Right up here, DC in. There's no ambiguity over that. So, what have we got here? Well, what we've got is a four pin jack. And on those four pins, we've got two that are together here on this side. And two that are together here. Now because there's a fuse... I know that this is the positive input because they always put the fuse in the positive input and then we can assume that these two pins are ground. So is there anything about this configuration that looks familiar to us? Well, on this line we've got fuse 6000, so that's this fuse here, that leads me onto an inductor, onto a second inductor, and we've got one MOSFET and then a second MOSFET and then a current sense resistor. So this is a very familiar configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my positive of my DC power supply to these two pins here. I'm going to connect my negative here and inject 19 volts and then start taking some measurements to see how far into the laptop my 19 volts is getting. To inject power onto the motherboard, I introduce my DC power supply. I set it to 19 volts, which is the voltage that this laptop accepts. I connect my black wire to ground and I connect my red wire to our positive input. Okay, now that we have power connected to the board, we need to take some measurements. So first of all, I'm going to introduce my digital multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. I connect my black probe to ground and then introduce my red probe. And the first position that I want to check in, we're injecting volts into this side of the fuse. So the first place I need to check is to see if the fuse is good. So I take my measurement here and I find that there is 19 volts at this point. So our fuse is good. Next component in line is L7600, which is this inductor. I place my probe to the other side of that inductor and I find that there is 19 volts here also. This next component doesn't have any label on it, but it seems to be just another little inductor, but it's got a metal strap sort of across the top. I'm not sure what that's about. I haven't seen one of these on the laptops we've been working on. Maybe somebody could post down in the comments what it is. but. All I need to confirm here is that there's 19 volts coming through it. So I place my probe to the other side of this component and once again I measure 19 volts there. The next two components in line are our two MOSFETs. Now the marking didn't come out well on these so I've just written in over it what the marking actually is. These are both the same type of MOSFET which is an E080BN and I found a data sheet for this. So the data sheet tells me that this is an N channel 30 volt 15 amp power MOSFET. So the configuration of this is we have 1, 2 and 3 which are our source pins. We have 4 which is our gate and 5, 6, 7 and 8 which are our drain pins. <laughs> 
I've marked in the pins of our first MOSFET. So we have 1, 2 and 3 which are our source pins, 4 which is our gate pin and 5, 6, 7 and 8 are our drain pins. Now we know we have 19 volts on our drain pins so we need to find out if this MOSFET is switched on and allowing that 19 volts through from drain to source. I measure the voltage at the gate pin right here and I find that there is 24.8 volts. So that signal should be enough to switch this MOSFET on and allow our 19 volts through from drain to source. And when I measure at my source pins, I find that there is 19 volts there. So that MOSFET is switched on and it is allowing my 19 volts through. Our second MOSFET is the same MOSFET, but it's just switched around either way. So this time we have our three source pins, one, two, three, four is our gate pin, and then five, six, and seven, and eight are our drain pins. So I take a measurement of a gate pin here, and we find that there is 24.8 on our gate. Again, that's a high signal for the gate, so this should allow our 19 volts through from our source to our drain. And I measure on my drain pins, and I find that there is 19 volts there. After our second MOSFET, the 19 volts then goes down to our current sense resistor and this is our main power rail. So what we can deduce from this is that our main power rail is good. We've still got no lights on our power button, so I think we've got a problem with our 3.3 volt circuit. So let's take a look at that next. To check for our 3.3 volts always on power, the easiest place to check is on our power button. Now I found our power button connector on the other side of the board. Here it is, power slash B. There's four pins on it, so we just need to check these pins. So once again, I introduce my multimeter in volts DC. And we then place our black probe to ground. And I just go one by one and check each of these pins. So I went along one by one. One, two, three, and four. And when I took those measurements, I've just written out here what I measure on each of those pins. It's easy to remember. 0, 0, 0, and 0 volts. So this confirms that our 3.3 volts always on is not present. So the question is, why do we not have 3.3 volts always on power? Well, we know for a start that it's nothing to do with our input section. Our main power rail is measuring 19 volts, so that is fully working. However, on these motherboards, there is usually an IC that takes that main power rail as its input and gives us 3.3 volts and 5 volts always on power as its output. So I had a look around the motherboard because I don't have any schematic. And what I found was that there is an IC right here. And that U6100 is actually a TPS51225. And that is dual synchronous step down controller with 5 volts and 3.3 volt LDOs. And as you can see, as we zoom in on that, the chip is blown. We need to replace this blown IC. However, before doing so, I need to confirm that the 3.3 volts always on power rail is not shorted and that the 5 volts always on power rail is not shorted. If we just go ahead and replace this IC and there is a short either on the 3.3 volts or on the 5 volts, it's likely that this IC may just blow again. So let me just check the data sheet and see if we can find which of the pins are responsible for the 3.3 volts always on and the 5 volts always on and we're going to check them. This is the pinout configuration for this IC. Now what I've done here is I have just marked it in on top of that I see on my image just to make it easier to follow along. As you can see we have pin 12 which is our V in so we would expect to find our 19 volts from our main power rail to supply the chip coming in here and the other two important pins are pin 3 which is our V red, reg 3. This is our 3.3 volts always on power rail and across from it on pin 13 is V reg 5 so this is our 5 volts always on power rail. So we need to check pin 3 and we need to check pin 13 and make sure there's no short. On pin 3, you can see this leads to a jumper. So we can desolder this to allow us to isolate the IC from the 3.3 volt always on power rail for troubleshooting purposes. So I just desolder that to disconnect those. So similarly on pin 13, there is also a solder uh, jumper down here. So I also desolder that and now I need to take some measurements in diode mode. So with my power completely switched off, 
I introduce my multimeter in diode mode, which looks like this in my multimeter. I place my red probe to ground and my black probe to the other side of that jumper. So what we're checking is everything that's connected to the 3.3 volt power rail. And when I connect it there, I find that it reads 0 0.500. So there is no short on the 3.3 volt power rail. Next, I carry out the same check for our 5 volt power rail. So I'm placing my black probe to the other side of the jumper on the 5 volt was on power rail and I measure 0 0.633. So we've confirmed that there's no short on our 3.3 volts always on power rail and there's no short on our 5 volts always on power rail. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all working, but it means we can at least change the IC in the comfort that we know that there's no short on either of those lines that's going to blow it again. So let's swap out the IC. This is a quick video that I took of me removing that IC. It's actually very cool difficult to do because the camera is in the position that you want to have the heat gun directly over it so you have to keep coming in around the side so it's very difficult to actually film it so that's the chip being removed I found a TPS 51225C on one of the old motherboards that I have here so I soldered that IC in place of the blown one that's a little crooked there so I had to come back at it and straighten it up and then I checked all of the pins afterwards with the microscope Having replaced the chip, I now plug it back in and I set my multimeter to voltage mode this time in the 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground and my red probe to the input V in pin. Now the easiest place to measure this is either at the capacitor here or at this little piece of solder right here. And when I measure here, I measure that there is 19 volts on the input. Next, of course, is the important bit. We need to see if our 3.3 volt power rail and our 5 volt power rail are online. So to measure the 3.3, there's a blob of solder here that we can just connect to to measure. So in volts DC, once again, I place my probe here, and I find that there is 3.32 volts on this. So it looks like replacing the IC has brought this back online. So we just need to check the 5 volts now. Next we need to check that our 5 volts always on power rail. We worked out earlier on that pin 13 is where our 5 volts comes out. So the easiest place to measure that is either on the jumper here or the capacitor. So I just place my red probe to the capacitor and I measure zero, uh, sorry, measure 5.02 volts. So it looks like our TPS 51225C IC is back working again. And this is me in the real world checking for those voltages I really need to clean up that IC so that was my 5 volt rail that was online and then I moved over to the other side of the IC and just took a measurement there very carefully as you can see yourself because these are tiny tiny chips so place my probe to it and there's my 3.3 .3 volt rail online Okay, so at this point we've replaced our IC and verified that our 3.3 volts and our 5 volts are back online. However, you may remember earlier in the video, we desoldered these jumper connections here and here. So we've effectively nothing connected to the 3.3 volt and nothing connected to the 5 volt. So now is the moment of truth really. We need to solder them back over like this and this. And now we're going to try and power the laptop on and see if it works. I connected up my DC power supply once again to inject power onto the board. And when I did that, unfortunately there was still no light on the power button. And when I pressed the power button, there was still no response from the laptop. So what I did was I checked in at these jumper positions once again. And what I found was that the 3.3 volts was cycling between 1 and 2 volts and the 5 volts was also cycling as if it was trying to start up and shut down start up and shut down I desoldered this jumper here again and when I did that the 3.3 .3 volts came back online and the 5 volts stayed online so it seems like we still have an issue with something down the path on this 3.3 .3 volts always on circuit that's where I'm going to leave it for this week guys so what have we done this week We've checked the laptop for our main 19 volt power rail which was present. We then checked for 3.3 .3 volt which was missing. The IC that produces that was blown so we replaced that. Brought the 3.3 .3 volt back online. And then when we tried to reconnect 
the rest of the circuit back to our 3.3 volt always on power it keeps power cycling so there is still a fault with our 3.3 volts always on circuit so why don't you post in the comments below what do you think it is and i'll take it from there next week thanks for all your comments please like and subscribe and post any suggestions and comments whatever you want down below i won't take offense to anything i'll see you next week